Jones is ecstatic. But what was he doing at Newton's? I have Calder and my cell hidden in the depths of the stockroom at the back of the shop. Oh, he was in the area, going hiking. I talk quietly, trying to keep my voice casual. I think this is one huge coincidence, Bella. Perhaps he was there to see you, Rose speculates excitedly. My heart lurches at the prospect, but it's a short-lived joy. The dull reality is that he's here on business. The realization is disappointing. He was visiting the farming division of WSU. He's funding some research. Oh yes, he's given the department a $2.5 million grant. Wow. Uh, how do you know this? Bella, I'm a journalist. And I've written a profile on this guy. It's my job to know this. Okay, Carla Bernstein, keep your hair on. So, do you want the photos? Of course I do. The question is, where to do them? We'll need to ask him. He says he's staying in the area this evening. Can you contact him? Uh, he gave me his cell phone number. Rose gasps audibly. The richest, most elusive, most enigmatic bachelor in Washington State gave you his cell phone number. Uh, yes. Bella, he likes you, no doubt about it. She braids down the phone. Rose, he's just trying to be nice, and... As I say the words, I know they're not true. Edward Cullen doesn't do nice, per se. He does polite, and a small, quiet voice whispers, uh, Perhaps Rose is right. My scalp prickles at the idea that maybe, just maybe, he might like me. After all, he did say he was glad that Rose didn't do the interview. I hug myself with quiet glee, rocking from side to side, allowing myself a brief moment where I entertain the possibility that he might like me. Rose brings me back to the now. I don't know who will get to shoot the photos. Uh, Eric, our regular photographer, can't do it. He's home in Idaho Falls for the weekend, uh, he'll be pissed that he blew the opportunity to photograph one of America's leading entrepreneurs. Hmm, what about Jacob? Great idea. You ask him, uh, he'll, he'll do anything for you. Then call Colin and ask him where he wants us. Rose is irritatingly cavalier about Jake. I think you should call him. Who, Jacob? No, Colin. Bella, you're the one with the relationship. Relationship? I squeak at her, my voice rising several octaves. I barely know the guy. At least you've met him, she says a little bitterly. It looks like he wants to know you better, Bella. Call him. She snaps at me and hangs up. She is so bossy sometimes. I frown at the phone and stick my tongue out at it. I'm leaving a message for Jake as Mike comes into the stockroom looking for more walking socks. It's busy out there, Bella, he says, not unkindly, referring to the shop floor. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I mutter. I go to leave. So, how do you know Edward Cullen? Mike stops me, his voice oozing curiosity. Uh, I had to interview him for eyewitness. Uh, Rose wasn't well. I shrugged, trying for casual again. Edward Cullen in Newton's. Go figure. Mike is enthusing. So, uh, what are you doing this evening? Uh, do you want to grab a drink or something? Uh, whenever he's home, he asks me out, and... I always say no, it's like a ritual. Uh, I've never thought it was a good idea to date the boss's son. 
Besides, Mike is cute in a wholesome, all-American boy-next-door kind of way. He's just not a literary hero by any stretch of the imagination. Is Cullen? Uh, my subconscious asks me with a figurative raised eyebrow. I slap it down. Don't you have a family dinner or something for your mom? That's tomorrow. Maybe some other time, Mike. I need to revise tonight. I have my finals next week. Bella, one of these days you'll say yes, he says, quietly smiling at me. I head quickly out to the shop floor. But I do places, not people, Bella. Please, Jake, I beg, pacing the living area of our apartment and staring out of the window at the fading evening light. Give me that phone. Rose grabs the handset from me, tossing her silken blonde hair over her shoulder. Listen here, Jacob Black. If you want eyewitness to cover the opening of your show, you will do this shoot for us tomorrow. Capiche? <laughs> okay. Rose is being an absolute... Dom stereotype. Rose is awesomely tough. Good. Bell will call back with details of location and call time. See you tomorrow. She snaps my cell phone shut. Sort it. All we need now is where and when. Call him. He holds the phone out to me and I feel physically sick. Call Colin now. I scowl at her and reach into my back pocket for his business card. I take a deep steadying breath and uh, with shaking fingers, I dial the number. He answers on the second ring, his tone clipped, calm, cold. Colin? Er, uh, Mr. Colin, it's uh, Isabella Swan. I don't recognize my own voice, I'm so nervous. There's a brief pause and inside I'm quaking. Miss Swan, how nice to hear from you. His voice has changed. He's surprised, I think, and he sounds so warm, seductive, even over the phone. My breath hitches and I flush. I'm conscious that Rosalie Hale is staring at me, her mouth open, so I walk quickly into the uh, kitchen to avoid her unwanted scrutiny. Er, we would like to go ahead with the photo shoot for the eyewitness piece, uh, Breathe, Bella. Breathe. My lungs drag in a hasty breath. Uh, tomorrow, if that's okay, uh, where would be convenient for you, sir? I can almost hear his sphinx-like smile through the phone. I'm staying at the uh, Heathman in Portland. Shall we say 9.30 tomorrow morning? Okay, uh, we'll see you there. I am all gushing and breathy. A child, not a grown woman who can vote and drink legally in the state of Washington. I look forward to it, Miss Swan. And I can visualize the wicked gleam in his green eyes. How can he make seven little words hold so much tantalizing promise? I hang up. Rose is staring at me. Her mouth is still open. A look of complete and utter consternation on her face. Isabella Marie Swan, you like him. I've never seen or heard you so, so affected by anyone before. You're blushing. Oh, Rose, you know I blush all the time. It's an occupational hazard with me. Don't be so ridiculous. I just find him intimidating, that's all. I snap at her and she blinks at me with surprise. I very rarely throw my toys out of the pram. I call Jake and tell him we'll pick him up in the morning to drive to the Heathman. Heathman, that figures, mutters Rose. I'll give the manager a call to negotiate a space in the hotel for the shoot. I'll make a supper, then I have to revise. I cannot hide my irritation with her as I strut towards the kitchen. I am restless that night, tossing and turning, dreaming of his green eyes, breathable pants, long legs, and 
There aren't dark places deep in the forest. I wake up twice in the night, my heart pounding. Oh, I'm just going to look great tomorrow with so little sleep. I school myself as I punch my pillow and try to settle. The Heathman nestles downtown in the heart of Portland. It's a pretty impressive brownstone edifice built just before the crash in the late 1920s. Jake, his friend Sam and I are in my truck. Rose and her Z4, as we can't all fit in the truck, uh, Sam is Jake's gopher. He is going to help with lighting. Rose has uh, managed to negotiate a free room for the morning in exchange for a thank you credit to the hotel in the article. She's explained that we are here to uh, photograph Edward Cullen, CEO, and we are upgraded to a suite. Mr. Cullen is already occupying the largest one in the building, so it's a regular sized suite. The uh, overkey marketing executive uh, shows us up to the rooms. He's terribly young and very nervous for some reason. I think it's Rose's beauty and her commanding manner that disarms him. He is putty in her hands. The rooms are very elegant, understated, and warmly furnished. It's 9 a.m., so we have half an hour to set up. Rose goes into full flow. Uh, Jake, I think we'll shoot against that wall, do you agree? She doesn't wait for his reply. Sam, uh, clear the chairs. Bella, ask housekeeping to uh, bring up some refreshments and uh, let Cullen know where we are. Yeah, this next line sums it up pretty well. Yes, mistress. She is so domineering. I roll my eyes at her and do as I'm told. Half an hour later, Edward Cullen walks into our suite. Holy crap! He's wearing a white shirt open at the collar uh, with gray flannel pants that hang from his hips. His unruly hair is still damp from a shower. My mouth goes dry looking for him. He's so freaking hot. He's followed in by a man in his mid-thirties, all buzz cut and uh, stubble in a sharp dark suit and tie. Who goes and stands in the corner, uh, his blue eyes watching us impassively. Miss One, we meet again. He extends his hand to me and I shake it, blinking rapidly at him. Oh my, it really is quite... wow. And uh, then I touch his hand and feel that delicious current run right through me. Lighting me up, making me blush, and I'm sure my erratic breathing must be audible. Uh, Mr. Collin, this is uh, Rosalie Hale. I breathe and wave a hand towards Rose, who comes forward, looking him squarely in the eye. The tenacious Miss Hale, how do you do? He smiles slightly, looking genuinely amused. Are you feeling better? Isabella told me you were unwell last week. I'm fine, thank you, Mr. Cullen. She shakes his hand firmly without batting an eyelid. And I have to remember that Rose has been to the best private schools in Washington. Her family have money and she's grown up confident and sure of her place in the world. She doesn't take any crap. I am in awe of her. Thank you for taking the time to do this, she gives him a polite, professional smile. It's a pleasure, he answers, turning his green gaze on me and I flush. Again. Damn it. This is uh, Jacob Black, uh, our photographer, I say, grinning at Jake, who smiles affectionately back at me. His eyes cool when he looks from me to Colin. Mr. Colin, he nods. Mr. Black, Colin's expression changes, appraising Jake. Where would you like me? His tone sounds vaguely threatening. But Rosalie is not going to let Jake run the show. Uh, Mr. Colin, if you could uh, sit here, please. Uh, be careful of the lighting cables. And then we'll do some standing, too. Uh, she directs him to a chair that's uh, set up against the wall. 
Sam switches on the lights, momentarily blinding Colin, and then he and I stand back and watch as uh, Jake proceeds to snap away. Jake takes several photographs handheld, asking Colin to turn this way and that, move his arm down again, and then Jake moves to the tripod and takes several more. Colin sits and poses patiently, and very naturally, for about 20 minutes. My wish has come true. I can stand and admire him from not so far? Twice our eyes lock, and I have to tear myself away from his emerald gaze. Uh, enough sitting, Rosalie waits in again. Uh, standing, Mr. Colin? she asks. He stands, and Sam moves in to remove the chair. The shutter on Jake Gubb's uh, Nikon starts again. I uh, think we have enough, Jake says after five minutes. Great, says Rose. Well, thank you again, Mr. Colin. She shakes his hand, as does Jake. Thank you. I look forward to reading the article, Miss Hale, he murmurs and walks towards the door where I'm standing. Uh, will you walk with me, Miss Swan? He asks quietly. Uh, sure, I say, completely thrown. I glance anxiously at Rose, who shrugs at me. I notice Jacob scowling behind her, and he turns to glare at me. Uh, good day to you all. Colin says to the room in general, and he opens the door and stands aside to allow me out first. Holy crow, what's this about? What does he want? I stand in the corridor, fidgeting nervously as he makes his way out of the room. He's followed by Mr. Buzzcut in the sharp suit. I'll call you, Taylor, he murmurs to Buzzcut, and the suited Taylor wanders back down the corridor. He turns his burning green gaze to me. Crap, have I done something wrong? I wondered if you would join me for coffee this morning. My heart slams into my mouth. A date? Edward Cullen is asking me on a date. He's asking if you want a coffee. Maybe he thinks that you haven't woken up yet. My subconscious snaps at me in a sneering mood again. I clear my throat nervously. I have to drive everyone home, I murmur apologetically, uh, twisting my hands and fingers in front of me. Taylor, he calls loudly, making me jump. Taylor, who's still retreating down the corridor, turns and returns to us. Taylor can take them. Are they based at the university? I nod, too stunned to speak. Uh, Taylor's my driver. We have a large 4x4 here, so he'll be able to take the equipment, too. Mr. Colin? Taylor asks politely as he reaches us, no expression at all on his face. Uh, please, can you drive the photographer, his assistant, and Miss Hale back to where they live? Certainly, sir, Taylor replies. Uh, there. Now can you join me for coffee? I frown at him. Uh, Mr. Colin, sure, uh, this really... Look, Taylor doesn't have to drive them home. I flash a brief look at Taylor, who remains stoically impassive. I'll swap vehicles with Rose if you give me a moment. Colin smiles, a dazzling, unguarded, natural, all teeth showing glorious smile at me. Oh my, and he opens the door of the suite so I can re-enter. I scoot around him to Rosalie, who is in deep discussion with Jacob. Well, Bella, I think he definitely likes you, she says with no preamble whatsoever. Jake glares at me disapprovingly. But I don't trust him, she says. I raise my hands up in hope that she'll stop talking. Uh, Rose, will you take the truck, and, uh, can I take your car? Why? Uh, Edward Collins asked me to go for coffee with him. Her mouth plops open. Speechless Rose. I enjoy the moment. She comes over to me and takes me by my arm and drags me into the bedroom adjoining the living area of the suite. Uh, Bella, there's something up about him, her tone is full of warning. He's gorgeous, I agree, but I think he's dangerous. 
Especially to someone like you. What do you mean, someone like me? I demand, affronted. An innocent like you, Bella. You know what I mean. And I flush. Rose, it's just coffee, and I start my exams tomorrow. I need to revise, so I won't be long. She purses her lips at me. She fishes into her pocket, hands me her car keys, and I hand her mine. I'll see you later, uh, don't be long, or I will send out a search party. Thanks, Rose. I hug her briefly, and I make my way out of the room where Edward Cullen is waiting, leaning up against the wall, looking like a male model posing for some glossy high-end magazine. Okay, let's do coffee, I murmur, flushing a beet red. He grins. After you, Miss Swan, he stands and holds his hand out for me to go first. I make my way down the corridor, my heart in my mouth, my stomach full of butterflies, and my heart thumping a dramatic, uneven beat. I'm going to have coffee with Edward Cullen. I hate coffee. Yeah, I know a bit about uh, Christian Grey in the officially published ver version, but I have no idea why Rosalie thinks he's dangerous now all of a sudden. I didn't really notice any preamble. And there's yet... Yeah, I keep having all these uh, noises interrupt me during recording. Hopefully I can edit this shit out. Um, anyway, see you guys next chapter.